depending upon which type of the solution gets that particular cell the osmosis it is of two different types the first exosmosis what is exosmosis then when any cell when any cell and it, it is kept in the uh, hypertonic solution hypertonic solution then the water molecule from that cell enters into the solution that type of the osmosis it is called as exosmosis that type of the osmosis it is called as exosmosis there another second type of the osmosis is endosmosis and it is exactly opposite of that one when that cell gets the hypotonic solution the cell gets the hypotonic solution and when the cell it is surrounded by the hypotonic solution then what will happen here the concentration and osmotic pressure of the cell shaft the concentration and the osmotic pressure of the cell shaft it is more so at that time the water molecule from the surrounding this water molecule will enter into the cell and such type of the osmosis what we call it as a the endo osmosis endo osmosis so depending upon what type of the solution that cell gets the osmosis occurs and these osmosis are of two types exosmosis and endosmosis let us see different examples of the exosmosis and the endosmosis first the exosmosis example of the exosmosis when we place the uh, swollen uh, grapes into the much more concentrated sugar solution then what will happen 30 percent concentrated sugar solution what will happen when we place the grapes the swollen grapes into the the concentrated sugar solution the concentration is much more much more than that of the concentration of the sugar into the grapes so at that time what will happen the water from the grapes it will enter into the solution concentrated sugar solution and these uh, grapes they will collapse the shrinking of the grapes will take place and this grapes because of the loss of water from the grapes the grapes will shrink this is an example of the exosmosis the example of endosmosis example of endosmosis is what we call it as a the resins so when we place these resins into the uh, water or any uh, solvent particularly water then what will happen the water from surrounding it will enter into the resins and the resins will swell up they will increase in the size this is an example of the endosmosis so these two types of the osmosis exosmosis and what we call it that endosmosis these osmosis takes place depending upon which type of the solution they cells gets this cells gets now how this process it helps in the plant cell or how it helps to the living cell for completing different processes importance let us see the importance the importance of osmosis to plants to the plants so what are the importance of the osmosis to the plants the first because of the osmosis the exchange of o2 and co2 takes place isn't it here the concentration of the o2 and co2 in case of the uh, intercellular spaces it increases 
and uh, this O2 and CO2 exchange of the O2 and CO2 it takes place because of opening and the closing of the stomata when the stomatal cell due to the endosmosis they gets the water and they swell up they become turgid then at that time two turgid cells these are responsible for opening of the stomata and when the stomata opens the O2 and CO2 from the intracellular spaces it comes out of the uh, loose into the atmosphere so the exchange of the gases it also depends upon the osmosis and that is called as the endosmosis because of the endosmosis the guard cells they swell up they become turgid they will increase in size and opening of the stomata takes place and unless and until opening of the stomata the o2 and co2 could not enter into the atmosphere from the intercellular spaces of the leaves so the o2 and co2 it will enter into the atmosphere because of the opening opening of stomata and opening and the closing of the stomata it is controlled by the endosmosis and the exosmosis whenever the water enters into the guard cell the stomata become uh, the stomata or the guard cells of the stomata they become turgid and they will increase in the size and the opening of the stomatal pore takes place and when the water loses or water in the form of the vapors when that guard cell loses the water then the the stomatal cells or what we call the guard cells become flaccid and the stomata become closed so the opening and the closing of the stomata depends upon the type of the or endosmosis and exosmosis the second point is that the movement of the water from one cell to the another cell so cell to cell movement of the water it takes place because of the endosmosis and the exosmosis the cell to cell moment cell to cell moment of water isn't it then as we discussed earlier that opening the opening and the closing closing of stomata opening and the closing of the stomata it also takes place because of the osmosis osmotic pressure and the uh, turgor pressure helps in the growth and the development of the plant as well as it helps in the germination of the seeds as the osmotic pressure in the seed it is high then at that time the water from the surrounding it will enter into the seed then the turgor pressure in the seed cell will increase the seeds will swell up that process is different imbibition process we will discuss in uh, later next lecture and because of the increase in the size of the seed the metabolic activities in the cell or the in the seeds increases and the germination of the seed takes place so germination of the seed it also takes place because of the opening and the closing of the sorry because of the osmosis next here the germination the germination comma growth and development development of the plants it is also controlled by the what we call it as the osmosis so because of the exosmosis from which the water loss takes place from different uh, tissues of the plant particularly because of the exosmosis the dispersal of the seeds takes place dispersal of seeds the dispersal of spores then um, the uh, dispersal of the fruits all these processes all these events these are taking place because of the loss of the water so the dispersal of fruits and the seeds or the spores it takes place because of the exosmosis so these are the importance of the osmosis now coming to the difference difference between the osmosis and the diffusion one by one we will see here the osmosis it requires the semi permeable membrane to occur it 
one more if we see the differences between the osmosis and uh, diffusion one by one the osmosis it requires the semi permeable membrane system to occur it whereas the diffusion it do not require such type of the membrane to occur it isn't it one difference the another difference is that the osmosis it takes place only liquids in liquids isn't it in liquid state it takes place it occurs in liquids here the diffusion it takes place in a gaseous liquid as well as in solid state in any state of the matter the diffusion can take place isn't it here actually in osmosis two solutions of different concentrations are required when these two solutions or the uh, two liquids which are not with a varying concentration the osmosis uh, do not take place because there is a equilibrium in the state at that time the osmosis do not take place whether exosmosis or endosmosis do not occur so it requires two solutions or two liquids isn't it of different concentration